Welcome back to TPS. Every NFL team has a very different history. If you're the Green Bay Packers, New England Patriots, or Pittsburgh Steelers, there's a lot more good than bad. If you're the Cleveland Browns, Arizona Cardinals, or Jacksonville Jaguars, well, let's just say that their times will eventually come. Hang in there, Browns, Cards, and Jags fans. Of course, every NFL team has experienced a handful of humiliating and forgettable losing seasons, even the great franchises. But which squad from each of the NFL's 32 teams stands out as the worst in their history? Let's dive right into it. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. Arizona Cardinals 1943 No NFL team has a longer losing history than the Cardinals. Even the Detroit Lions and Cleveland Browns had some glorious years in the 50s and 60s. 1943 Cardinals, who were based in Chicago at the time, were downright awful in every category. Head coach Phil Handler wasn't able to do anything with such a flawed team. The Cardinals lost all 10 of their games, averaging a woeful 9.5 points per game. By comparison, the Cardinals surrendered 23.8 points per game that season, and they finished with a brutal minus 143-point differential. Atlanta Falcons 1989 These Falcons were helpless in just about every aspect. Quarterback Chris Miller had just 16 touchdowns against 10 interceptions. There were no 1,000-yard rushers or receivers. Head coach Marion Campbell stepped down with four games remaining, and Jim Hannafin had to take over his role. The Falcons finished with a franchise-worst 3-13 record, and they had a putrid minus 158-point differential on the season. Baltimore Ravens 1996 In the Ravens' defense, this was their first NFL season, only they weren't quite an expansion franchise. The team had relocated from Cleveland, and they decided to drop the Browns' name and change it to Ravens. In their inaugural season, the Ravens went a lowly 4-12. Four years later, they soundly defeated the New York Giants 34-7 in Super Bowl 35. Call the 96 Ravens season growing pains, if you will. Buffalo Bills 1971 Yeah, it was just ugly all around. The 1971 Buffalo Bills just had nothing going for them. Even Pro Bowl running back O.J. Simpson had a down year for his standards, with just 742 rushing yards and five touchdowns. The Bills finished with a horrendous 1-13 record on the season, and they finished with a minus 210-point differential, which remains the worst in franchise history. At least the 1984 Bills came close with a minus 204-point differential ranked. Unfortunately for Bills fans, it would be almost two decades until the glory days of the 90s came around. Carolina Panthers 2001 This was a disaster from start to finish. The Panthers had hoped that head coach George Seifert would bring the same winning culture he had in San Francisco. He was on staff for all five of the Niners Super Bowl championships, and Seifert was the head coach for two of them. But the 2001 Panthers didn't have Joe Montana or Steve Young or Jerry Rice or Ronnie Lott to help Seifert out. After winning their Week 1 opener in Minnesota, Carolina proceeded to lose their final 15 games. Carolina ranked 29th in scoring offense and 28th in scoring defense. Their quarterbacks tossed 10 touchdowns against 22 interceptions. Amazingly, new head coach John Fox got this team to the Super Bowl two years later. That's quite the turnaround. Chicago Bears 1969 Even franchise icon and Hall of Fame linebacker Dick Butkus couldn't save this team, nor could 1,000-yard rusher Gale Sayers. The 96 Bears just had nothing going for them, except for Sayers and Butkus, of course. They finished with a 1-13 record, which still stands as the worst in franchise history. The minus 129-point differential was a franchise worst at the time as well. Cincinnati Bengals 2002 Dick LeBeau, the future defensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers, simply couldn't cut it as head coach. LeBeau's Bengals stunk it up big in 2002, even 1,311 rushing yards from Corey Dillon and 1,166 receiving yards from Chad Johnson didn't amount to much for Cincy. They finished with a horrendous 2-14 record, ranking 28th in the scoring offense and dead last in scoring defense, allowing a whopping 28.5 points per game. On the bright side, the Bengals obtained the first overall pick, which they used on future Pro Bowl quarterback Carson Palmer. Cleveland Browns 2017 Break up the Browns Expectations were as low as ever for the 2017 Browns. Hugh Jackson was still head coach. Miles Garrett, the first overall pick, wasn't going to fix this on his own. And of course, the Browns used three different quarterbacks. They ranked last in scoring offense with 14.6 points per game and 31st in scoring defense by allowing 25.6 points per game. And by the way, the Browns finished 0 and 16. Can you believe it? We're guessing the Browns and 2008 Lions got together and started singing, You'll Never Walk Alone after this. 
Dallas Cowboys 1960. The glory days of the 60s with Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett were still several years away, to put it mildly. The 60s Cowboys just weren't good at the game of football at all. Even legendary head coach Tom Landry couldn't do much with this group. The Cowboys finished the season with a horrible 0-11-1 record. No offense, but it's sad when your season highlight is a tie, which took place in Week 11 against the New York Giants. Dallas, by the way, finished with a 192-point differential on the year. Denver Broncos, 1964. This was a tough choice for us. The 61, 63, 67, and 2010 Broncos were also in consideration, so what made us choose 64 here? Easy, point differential. We'll get to that in a second. Head coach Jack Faulkner was fired after an 0-4 start, but the team didn't fare much better with new coach Max Speedy. Denver quarterbacks tossed 14 touchdowns against 32 interceptions, and the team ranked last in both scoring offense and defense. Oh, and their minus 198 point differential still stands as the worst in franchise history. Detroit Lions 2008. They lost all 16 games. They became the first team in NFL history to lose every contest in the 16 game season. Detroit also allowed, wait for it, 517 points against that year, or 32.3 points per game. At least they were able to secure the first overall pick, which turned into Matthew Stafford. And hey, the guy is pretty darn good. Green Bay Packers 58. Look at the stars on the 58 roster, and it's hard to imagine how the Packers could have fared so poorly. This team consisted of Green Bay Packers legends such as Bart Starr, Jerry Kramer, and Ray Nitschke, among many others. But the Packers just weren't ready for prime time yet. They finished with a lowly 1-10-1 record on the season, finishing dead last in both scoring offense and defense. Head coach Ray McLean stepped down, Vince Lombardi took over, and as they say, the rest is history. The Packers just needed that one humiliating season before finally morphing into a dynasty throughout the 60s. Houston Texans 2005 Hard to believe it, but the Texans were actually better in their first, second, and third years compared to 2005. The Texans did not get better over time, rather they somehow managed to get even worse. Don Capers 2005 squad finished last in scoring defense, allowing 431 points per game. David Carr, the number one selection from the 2002 draft, didn't get any better with 14 touchdowns against 11 interceptions. Pro Bowl wideout Andre Johnson had just 688 yards, which was very poor by his standards. The Texans finished 2-14 on the year. They secured the number one selection and selected Mario Williams. Indianapolis Colts 91. Let's just summarize how awful the Colts offense was. For starters, they scored 143 points, which was the lowest ever for a single team in a 16-game season at the time. Although just one year later, the Seahawks would break that record by putting up just 140. Indianapolis was shut out twice in 91. They only scored double-digit points in five games, and quarterback Jeff George had just 10 touchdowns against 12 interceptions on the year. Having averaged just 8.9 points per game, the Colts still managed to come away with one victory on the season. Their 1-15 record remains the worst in franchise history. Jacksonville Jaguars 2012 you can't say the Jaguars haven't been consistent throughout the 21st century. Consistent losers. But even though Jacksonville has been terrible for the better part of the decade, the 2012 squad is unquestionably the worst that Duval County has had the misfortunes of watching. Mike Mularkey simply wasn't qualified to be the head coach, but he can't take all the blame. He's not the one who wasted so many top 10 selections on big-time draft busts. These awful Jaguars average just 15.9 points per game, bad enough for 30th in the NFL. They also allowed 27.8 points per game, which ranked 29th. Malarkey and GM Gene Smith were fired following the embarrassing 2012 campaign. Kansas City Chiefs 2012 Not to be outdone by the Jaguars, the Chiefs were the NFL's worst team in 2012. Head coach Romeo Cornell just couldn't make it work, despite a fairly talented roster that was only two years removed from an AFC West Division championship. The KC quarterbacks Matt Castle and Brady Quinn combined for just eight touchdowns and 20 interceptions. The Chiefs averaged just 13.2 points per game, placing them last in the NFL. The defense allowed a whopping 26.6 points per contest, too. The Chiefs set a franchise record for worst point differential at minus 214. On top of that, they tied the 2008 squad for the worst record in the franchise history at 2-14. Of course, the Chiefs would hire Andy Reid as their new coach, and they traded for quarterback Alex Smith. KC would experience a renaissance soon after becoming one of the top teams in the AFC from there. Los Angeles Chargers 2000 We've always laughed at the Chargers because they've always found ways to waste Hall of Fame talents, and they always find the most amazing ways to lose games, too. But the 2000 Chargers were on another level of sadness and comedy. Under head coach Mike Riley, San Diego finished with a horrendous 1-15 record. 
They used three different quarterbacks who combined for 19 touchdowns against 30 interceptions. Despite obtaining the number one pick, the Chargers would trade it to the Atlanta Falcons, who went on to select Michael Vick. This marked the final season of Bobby Beathard's Hall of Fame career, too. It was a downright depressing year in San Diego, to say the least. The Los Angeles Rams 2009 The struggling Rams hired New York Giants defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo to take over as their new head coach in 2009. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do much of anything with very little talent on the roster. Running back Steven Jackson had 1,416 yards on the year, but that was a lone bright spot. The Rams finished with the NFL's worst record at 1-15. Their 10.9 points per game ranked dead last in the NFL. The Rams also allowed 436 points against, which placed them 31st in the league. St. Louis landed the first overall pick, which they used on quarterback Sam Bradford. Dolphins 2007 it was just awful and horrendous in every sense. Miami used three different starting quarterbacks. Marty Booker led the team in receiving with a mere 556 yards. Leading rusher Ronnie Brown only had 602 yards on the ground. The Dolphins didn't even win their first game of the season until Week 15, and that was an overtime contest against the lowly Baltimore Ravens. Miami finished with a 1-15 record, which marked the worst in franchise history. Minnesota Vikings 1984 Hall of Fame head coach Bud Grant, who guided the Vikings to an NFL championship in 69, retired after the 83 season. His replacement, Les Steckel, wasn't able to do much with a team that was completely devoid of talent. Minnesota allowed 484 points against, which amounts to 30.3 points against per game. The Vikings finished with a brutal 3-13 record, which stood as the worst in franchise history until the 2011 squad matched it. The desperate Vikings brought Grant out of retirement and he coached them once again in 85 before leaving again. The Saints, 1980 New Orleans was constantly one of the NFL's worst teams throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But without a doubt, the 1980 squad takes the cake as the worst in franchise history. Where do we start? The 1-15 record? The franchise's worst minus 196 point differential? The fact that they used three different quarterbacks throughout the year? Not only were the 1980 Saints the worst in franchise history, you can make a case that this was the absolute worst NFL team of the decade. New England Patriots 90 Way before the arrivals of Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady, the Patriots were a colossal failure in the NFL. Hard to believe, but it's true. The 90s Patriots were an absolute train wreck in every aspect. Their 1-15 record and minus 265 point differential stand as all-time franchise worst. Their three quarterbacks combined to throw just 14 touchdown passes. The team averaged a whore 11.3 points per game. But the on-field play was only one half of the story. At one point during the season, Boston Herald reporter Lisa Olsen was sexually harassed by several Patriots players while they were naked. The owner spoke out against Olsen and called her a vulgar term. Olsen sued the Patriots for the sexual harassment incident and she chose to leave the Boston Herald soon after. It's a horrible and embarrassing year for the Patriots from start to finish. Giants 1966 2017 version of the Giants set a franchise record with most losses in a season, with 13, but these 66 G-men belong in a class all on their own. The squad finished with a woeful 1-12-1 record. No other team in the history of the Giants finished with less than two victories. New York also recorded a putrid minus 238 point differential, which is far and away the worst in their history. But when Hall of Famer Fran Tarkenton arrived in 67, he provided a little more stability as the Giants recorded non-losing seasons in three of the next four years. Jets 96 After a dismal 13 loss season in 1995, the Jets signed former Steelers quarterback Neil O'Donnell in free agency. The 92 Pro Bowler was coming off of a Super Bowl appearance in Pittsburgh, but O'Donnell's first season with the Jets was cut short because of a shoulder injury. That forced Frank Reich, future head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, to take over under center. And boy, did these Jets ever take it on the chin as a result. The 96 Jets finished with an embarrassing 1-15 record, with their lone win coming in Week 9 against the Arizona Cardinals. The 454 points against were the most allowed in franchise history. New York also finished with a future minus 175-point differential. Oakland Raiders 1962 This was only the third season in the history of the Raiders, but we're not giving them a pass here. This was without a doubt the worst team in the history of the once proud franchise. Four different quarterbacks were used in 62, and the Raiders finished last among all AFL teams in scoring offense. They averaged just 15.2 points per game while allowing 26.4 points per contest. Oakland finished with a humiliating 1-13 record on the season. On the bright side, the Raiders haven't had a one-win season ever since. Eagles 98 These Eagles just couldn't get anything right. Bobby Hoying, Rodney Pete, and Coy Detmer were all used at quarterback. The three of them combined to throw 
just seven touchdown passes. With numbers like that, the Eagles obviously finished last in scoring offense. The 161 points from this squad are tied with the 2000 Browns for third fewest points ever in a 16-game season. Head coach Ray Rhodes was let go after this debacle. To date, this is the only squad in Eagles history to have lost 13-plus games. Pittsburgh Steelers 1969 One win minus 186-point differential. That's a note underneath that entry. So, you should know that. In the Super Bowl era, no team has been more consistent than the Steelers. They have six Lombardi trophies to back it up and a total of eight conference championships. The team hasn't recorded a losing season since 2003 either. Pittsburgh only had seven losing seasons under legendary head coach Chuck Knoll during his 23 years on the job. But let's just say that 1969, his first year at the helm, was nothing more than growing pains. The Steelers finished with a 1-13 record, which remains the worst in franchise history half a century later. Their 28.9 points allowed per game were last in the NFL. Of course, Pittsburgh went on to draft Terry Bradshaw first overall in 1970, and they selected four future Hall of Famers in 74. The Steelers would win four Super Bowls under Noel and Bradshaw. We'd say they bounced back nicely after that wretched 1969 campaign. 49ers 2004 The 49ers had a lot of bad years before Joe Montana and Bill Walsh arrived, but the 2004 squad is the worst in the history of this proud franchise. Four San Francisco teams have posted 2-14 and 14 records, including the 2004 squad. So why are they taking this spot here? Let's just consider the woeful minus 193-point differential, which tied for the worst mark in 49ers history. The 49ers ranked 30th and 32nd in scoring offense and defense, respectively. They landed the first pick in 2005 and selected Utah quarterback Alex Smith. Seahawks 92 Is it a stretch to say that this was the worst offense of all time? No. This Seahawks team scored 140 total points that came to an average of 8.8 .8 per game, which remains the fewest ever in a 16-game regular season. It may not surprise you that Seattle used three quarterbacks who tossed nine touchdowns together against 23 interceptions. Heck, fullback John Williams led the team in receiving. Yes, a fullback was Seattle's top receiver with 556 yards, and he was second in team rushing. The 2-14 record to date remains the worst in Seahawks history. Tampa Bay Buccaneers 76 The worst team in NFL history? There's a compelling case to be made. The Bucs lost all 14 contests, becoming the first team to do this in a 14-game season. In their defense, they were an expansion team who had to pick up players nobody really wanted in the expansion draft. Head coach John McKay once told his players, You guys don't know the difference between a football and a bunch of bananas. And on one instance, he told the reporters we didn't block real good, but we made up for it by not tackling. Also worth mentioning that the 0-14 Bucks averaged just 8.9 points on offense, while surrendering 29.4 points per game. Titans 73 The Titans' Houston Oilers franchise has recorded seven seasons of 13-plus losses in their history, but the 73 Oilers squad takes a spot when it comes to naming the worst of all of them. Head coach Bill Peterson departed after an 0-5 start, and the team didn't fare much better under his replacement, Sid Gilman. The Oilers finished with a horrid 1-13 record, and their minus 248-point differential remains the worst in franchise history. And the uh, Houston quarterbacks tossed only 11 touchdown passes against 27 interceptions. Redskins 61 Take away the dynasty days with Joe Gibbs and the Redskins have a whole lot of losing in their history, especially in the 60s and 21st century. But in our minds, the 61 Redskins are the worst that DC has ever had to offer. The 60s Redskins finished with a 1-9-2 record, but the 61 squad managed to finish even worse at 1-12-1. Not to mention these guys finished with a brutal minus 218-point differential. In fact, Washington's only win came in the final game of the season against the terrible Dallas Cowboys. The two teams also tied in their Week 10 showdown. What do you think is the worst season in your favorite NFL team's history? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.